Energy Media Readers, a couple months ago, there was some controversy as the Alberta government shifted control of teachers' pensions over to the Alberta Investment Management Company, or AIMCO. And there, the controversy uh, is partly in, uh, around AIMCO's investment in junior oil companies and service companies that are not financially viable. There have been some failures already. And uh, to talk about that today, uh, uh, Duncan Kinney, Executive Director of Progress Alberta, has released a report on AIMCO and its investments in the oil and gas company. So welcome to the interview, uh, Duncan. Thank you for having me, Mark. Cheers. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, look, this is a pretty complex uh, topic, and I'm gonna, I'll post the, the link so that my readers can read more in depth. But let's, you know, let's do a, a, a nickel tour of your report. So give me a, a quick overview. So we were able to piece together, you know, through publicly available information, corporate documents, that kind of thing, the fact that AIMCO has invested at least $1.1 billion that we know about into the companies you described, uh, junior producers, intermediate producers, and oil field services companies. These companies were in trouble before the latest crisis. And the latest crisis uh, due to COVID-19 and the Saudi Arabia, Russia price war has only kind of magnified the trouble that these companies are in. And so that, that's the long and short of it. Um, we've also found that the the companies that they've invested in, that Inco has invested in, have more than $3 billion in environmental liabilities. And that is a huge concern in Alberta right now as well. Now, I remember when the previous controversy erupted, uh, AIMCO came out and said, and you can find this on the website and in their annual reports, that you know they have, supposedly have, uh, processes and procedures, checks and balances to make sure that they're being very careful and not investing, not putting too much of that pension money at risk, but it sounds like maybe they're either not being straight with Albertans or something else is going on. What do you think? I think the folks who work at AIMCO have uh, an appetite for risk that uh, a lot of their customers and a lot of Albertans don't share. Uh, we just saw this story break recently of, you know, $4 billion being uh, like vaporized um, on some like weird derivative volatility credit swap complicated on purpose thing, uh, you know, that story just broke. And then we are also just learning from the Progress Alberta report that they've invested more than a billion dollars into these rickety, ris risky oil and gas companies. And, uh, you know, these people are supposed to be the, the smartest people in the room, right? They're responsible for so much money. They have so much trust placed in them. I'm just some schmuck with a communications degree. But like, even I know that you shouldn't be investing in like a junior oil and gas producers uh, in 2020. <laughs> Duncan, how much, uh, actually, I was a little surprised by your report that, that the directive management start with AIMCO, that which means the government can direct uh, AIMCO to invest in various sectors, actually started under uh, Rachel Notley and the NDP. Yeah, the very first budget that the NDP brought in, there was this Alberta growth mandate, and it was this incredibly broad uh, directive, which uh, governments shouldn't be able to tell pension funds, pension managers what to do, but that's a separate question. But yes, the NDP brought this in, and uh, they told them to invest local, essentially. And the AIMCO interpreted that mandate uh, in such a way that two out of every three dollars invested in it uh, ended up going into oil and gas projects or oil and gas companies. Now that's a little surprising to me because, of course, uh, you know, 2015, the uh, it, the downturn, uh, the previous downturn had already started. It uh, persisted through 2016, 2017, 2018. Already, junior companies were in big trouble and couldn't raise capital according to the Alberta Securities Commission. So how much of this investment took place, you know, 2018, 2019, when all the, you know, the red lights were flashing around junior companies and small service companies? I don't have the year by year breakdown uh, on me or in the report, but you can check out the appendixes which do have the dates. And this all started in 2016, like fall 2016 is really when this all kind of really kicked off. There was a big announcement, it was like a $200 million uh, investment in, in CalFRAC well services. And that was really the kind of big public kickoff of this Alberta growth mandate. It was kind of talked about in the media. The government used it as evidence of their diversification strategy was in full swing. And the government at the time being the NDP. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't know, I can't see into their mind's eye and understand why they were making these investments. 
But yeah, if you are uh, loaning $15 million to Razor Energy in 2018, this is a small producer, less than 5,000 barrels a day with a ton of environmental liabilities on its books. Like, I don't know what to tell you. That is a bad investment. Well, let's talk about environmental uh, liabilities because that's on everybody's mind these days because of the orphan well issue. And of course, the federal government put $1.7 billion towards cleaning up orphan wells. And I know a couple of people in the industry have said that w one of the unintended consequences is you let a bunch of bad actors off the hook. And it sounds like some of these companies that AIMCO uh, invested in were in fact bad actors and now they have plenty of environmental liabilities. Yes, this issue isn't going away. I mean, did AIMCO cause the orphan well crisis? No. Are they deeply enmeshed in it through their investments in these companies? Yes. And that, it's extremely concerning, right? It, when these, it's a double whammy. If these companies go under, not only do, do, do you know, pensioners as well as regular Albertans, because a lot of this money comes from the Heritage Trust Fund, they, they get it. But then the people of Alberta get it again in the context of these companies going under and dropping millions, if not billions, of environmental liabilities on our heads. And this $1.7 billion that's been uh, set aside by the, the federal government, and I, great, I mean, put some people to work, clean up these orphan wells, there's, there's lots of work to do. Uh, industry should have been paying it for it in the first place. We, we should have had a regulator that was willing to actually regulate and, and force these companies to set aside, you know, money to clean these up. We, we didn't have that. But ultimately that $1.7 billion, like that doesn't even cover the handful of companies that we're talking about in this report. Right, like it's a drop in the bucket. Well, you know, I was talking to, uh, I was interviewing a banker the other day who had been involved in uh, oil and gas, uh, you know, investments. And she was making the point that, you know, a lot of these, uh, well, the bankers are, are basically uh, keeping a lot of these companies on a lifeline because uh, if they take them over, uh, you know, if they get to put them into bankruptcy and then, and then they seize their assets, the assets have no value. There's no, mark, there's no market for them right now. Plus, they come encumbered with these environmental liabilities, which then become the responsibility of the bank. And AIMCO presumably would be in exactly the same position. Yes. I mean, a lot of these companies are still only around by the good graces of AIMCO. They're substantial creditors to these companies, as well as investors. And um, you're exactly correct. Uh, there was, in, a, in the report, you can see there was three companies, uh, Journey, Paraday, and Razor, Energy all had the terms of their debt renegotiated just in fall 2019, October 2019, on terms that were very favorable to the companies. I mean, this this is a trend. Uh, you know, it's happening to the banks. It's happening with Amco. I assume it's happening with ATB, Alberta Treasury Board. Uh, but they're they're a bit of a black box as well. We don't know how deep they are into this uh, as well, but we suspect that they are as well. So your report has some recommendations, uh, rather pointed ones, for the federal government as it fine tunes its support package for oil and gas. Give me the top two or three recommendations. Yeah, it really is. I mean, uh, this, this federal oil and gas bailout that's coming, um, the federal government needs to be careful, right? I mean, there are lessons they can learn from AIMCO's behavior in this fact. Like, we're calling it a failed bailout for a reason. Like, the Alberta government, uh, sorry, the federal government does not need to follow in AIMCO's footsteps. And so what the federal government needs to do is they need to do a very thorough accounting of the, the, uh, the environmental liabilities that these companies hold. I mean, you should not be investing in any company that does not have the money set aside to cover its environmental liabilities. That is, that is simply a fact. Uh, if they don't have the assets on hand to cover the, what it costs to clean up the stuff that they have at hand, don't give them any money. Um, you know, the same goes for their credit worthiness. A lot of these companies, this is why they ended, like they were getting loans from AIMCO at like seven, eight, nine, ten 10% was was the highest number i saw that's that's those that's financing you get when you can't get money from the banks so if they were to actually look at the credit worthiness as well as the environmental liabilities that these companies hold with with a, with an actual eye towards excluding companies that pair, fare poorly on those metrics you know those companies shouldn't be getting any money i mean I, i'm sorry to say like oil and gas in uh, in alberta and canada had a very good run conventional oil and gas but it hasn't made money in a decade. And so, you know, we, we've got to let the market take its course if that's something that you believe in and, 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 and see what happens. Um, I wrote a column uh, a month or two ago about uh, a report that came out from the Alberta Securities Commission in December. And basically you know, what it said is that the 2018, the oil and gas company, the companies could not raise a dime of capital. 
on the public offerings. And in 2019, the entire sector was able to raise only $1 billion, which is a pittance compared to previous years. And, the, uh, and I've talked to a number of economists and so on. The juniors are in the throes of a capital crisis. They literally, they haven't got cash flow. They can't raise money from the public offerings that private equity won't touch them. The banks don't want to lend them any more than they absolutely have to. This is a sector that's in big, big trouble. And it sounds like AIMCO got in at exactly the wrong time. Yeah, AIMCO, uh, AIMCO tried to catch the knife and the knife went right through their hand. Like there's, um, again, this sector hasn't made money in a decade and AIMCO thought it was a good time to throw hundreds of millions of dollars at junior producers. The oil field service sector is slightly removed, but still in very big trouble. <laughs> Uh, and really does require external actors to save it in the form of this kind of cleanup, right? But the producers are hooped and there's really no way around it. And the timing of it, as you say, by AIMCO is bad. <laughs> it's very bad. And it's a, it's a very bad look. And you, you stack this, these bad decisions on top of the bad decisions that led to vaporizing $4 billion in pensioners' money. And um, you have to wonder who's in charge of AIMCO, who's mining the store, why are these people in charge of... $118 billion, at least by their last count. Now, like, why would we entrust them? And there needs to be a, there needs to be a thorough review of both the governance and the performance of this company. Like, this, this cannot be allowed to stand. There must be consequences. Duncan, thank you very much for this. Uh, it's a very interesting report. I know I'll be doing some additional interviews with experts trying to explore some of the issues that you've raised. So thank you for this, and no doubt we'll be chatting again in the near future. Thanks for having me, Markham.